This is the On the Pony Express podcast, part of the On3 network. Check out all the SMU coverage you need at ontheponyexpress.com. Now, now. here's your host, Billy Embody. Billy Embody. One, two, three, let we go. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. We are presented by Status Jet, statusjet.com. Check out what David Henry and his team got cooking up over there for some of the many events that we have coming up on the schedule for the ACC this fall. But more importantly, the Super Bowl is just over a week away, which means it's a massive opportunity for those who love to take a trip on a private jet or charter a plane with a group of friends to Las Vegas for the Super Bowl. It is a massive, massive event in the private jet space. So reach out to his his team at Status Jet. You can call them 866-696-7773 and mention on theponyexpress.com and our code PONYUPACC for a discount on a round trip with status jet and whether you're buying a plane selling a plane or just looking to use status jet as your charter jet company they will take care of you uh, at an incredibly high level so reach out to them uh, they can hook it up for you guys um, and they're friends of the program uh, so they can put you in a big plane small plane helicopters even um, they hook it up across the board and they're proud supporters of SMU Athletics. So I, I've actually heard a couple folks who uh, are in the private jet space have uh, reached out to them and are going to give them a shot. So that was exciting news uh, to be told by David Henry and his team over there at Status Jet. But um, SMU uh, had a tough day on the recruiting front, losing a commitment. But we'll get into that. Um, as well as talk about some off-season goals. Now that uh, spring football is approaching, the calendar is about to turn to February, so we'll start diving into that a little bit. But first, we've got to react to the news that happened shortly before uh, the podcast, which is that four-star running back Ricky Stewart uh, decommitted from SMU. Uh, We talked about Ricky and his offer from Texas back uh, on his junior day visit to Austin on January 20th. Well, now... He announced that he is backing off his commitment to SMU, and the expectation is is that he'll end up a Longhorn at this point, um, and and it could happen relatively soon. This is a a tough blow for SMU. They did a really nice job getting him committed. Kyle Cooper and Keenan Hall um, working on this one to to get him on board this summer. Obviously, Keenan left for Baylor, um, and they were in the running, but once that Texas offer came, this this is the school that really had all the momentum behind the scenes. And so fully expecting him to end up a Longhorn uh, and they'll get uh, one of the top running backs in the state of Texas and SMU uh, loses a uh, key piece to their class. I mean, there's no way around it, whether uh, it's losing a prospect to Texas or, or just, um, you know, however it happens, whenever you lose a guy who has ran for as many yards as Ricky has throughout his high school career, you've got to sit back, uh, assess the situation and and find what's next um, when when it comes to addressing the running back position in the 2025 class. So um, kind of is what it is when you recruit some really good players, they can end up going elsewhere uh, sometimes and they're just waiting on uh, that offer um, that, that, you know, kept, that they know is the one that um, they want and then they, they, you know, take it. So, Uh, Ricky is going to head to Texas in all likelihood, um, barring uh, some sort of surprise, um, at least from what we're hearing behind the scenes. And so for SMU, now that means they've got to turn their attention uh, back to uh, recruiting in the class of 2025. And uh, they did dish out a new offer. So we'll talk about some of the guys that are on the board for SMU, a a few to really kind of, um, uh, I guess, highlight when it comes to uh, the recruiting efforts for this staff. But the first one I want uh, to make note of is one of the newest offers, and that is four-star Louisiana running back Jalen Coleman. And he is one of the fastest players in the country uh, at the running back position, a guy I've known a lot about for a long time. And Kyle Cooper was down in Louisiana this week 
and he extended an offer to Jalen Coleman. He's 5'8", 180 pounds, 170 pounds uh, from what I'm told. So that that weight, you'll see it um, be updated at some point when he makes a visit. He really hasn't made too many visits, but he's got offers from Florida State, <clears throat> Florida State, uh, Oregon, um, and many others out there. Uh, picked up a Missouri offer just after SMU, but he likes uh, the offense that that SMU runs, and so the Mustangs are now going to try to, um, you know, circle the wagons on him at least, get him in on a visit. He's not going to take uh, any visits from what he told me until until April. He's not going anywhere this weekend, so you might see him pop up for a March visit somewhere, maybe SMU. Um, but he is one of the fastest players in the country. Kind of reminds me of Braden West in a way back in the day, uh, for those of you who remember Braden. Um, and, and he was, uh, very productive, uh, despite his size. So, uh, with Jalen Coleman getting an offer now, uh, that is just one of the guys that Kyle Cooper can, can turn his attention to. And then there's Tiger Ryden, Deandre Ryden out of DeSoto, who you see, if you're watching on YouTube, the on three RPM does favor the Mustangs, uh, in this one, but he is going to be another tough battle and and I think when you look at that on three RPM you look at Texas being on there well they they're in the lead for Jordan Davison uh, a California running back um who is who's trending to the Longhorns he's made a couple visits so I don't think they end up taking three down there in in Austin um but Texas A&M is a threat Oklahoma is recruiting him but he is somebody that uh, a lot of people even the national uh reporters who who you know, cover this on, on multiple levels day to day. I was talking with some of them this week, um, just quite honestly preparing uh, for, for the potential that uh, Ricky Stewart would end up moving on, which he did. And I was kind of feeling him out. I said, hey, look, you know, Tiger has made a few visits to SMU. Uh, he has maintained his interest, at least talking with me after his state championship game. Do you think that SMU is a real player? And they said, yes, they're just not talked enough about because they are this new program to the ACC, to the Power Five ranks. And so with that, um, SMU is battling some top-level competition there. Um, Tiger did check out Miami, I believe, while he was down at Battle Miami this past weekend. Um, but Texas A&M is uh, probably the biggest challenger as of right now. But what I like about Tiger is uh, he's pre a pretty compact, well-built running back. Um, he is somebody that that has been highly productive for DeSoto over the last couple of years. He's been a national name since you know pretty early on in his recruitment. And if SMU could reel him in, that would be ideal. He's not a burner. He doesn't uh, have an elite track pedigree like a guy like uh, Ricky Stewart does, or excuse me, Jalen Coleman does. But he does make. Um, the right reads, very patient runner, and, and he is a, a very good prospect in his own right. So for SMU, they're going to continue to push for guys like Tiger Ryden and and also, um, you know, another name that has kind of long been on the radar is Michael Turner, who um, isn't the Atlanta Falcons running, former Atlanta Falcons running back, and I, I don't think they're related either, but um, he does play for North, uh, he plays for Richland High, here in the Dallas area, um, a um, high school that did produce Rasheed Rice and does have their fair share of prospects over uh, just about each and every year. There's at least one high level guy or, or certainly an FBS guy that comes out of there. And um, Rhett Lashley was uh, out on the recruiting trail. I believe he swung through um, there to see. Uh, yes. So he he swung through there to see him, um, which is kind of a timely trip over there. Uh, for Rhett Lashley, the day Ricky Stewart decommits, uh, Michael Turner gets a visit from Rhett Lashley, and he's a top 100 back on on three. Uh, he is a big dude, six foot, uh, 190 pounds already, and a guy that uh, is not really talked enough about, I think, nationally. And, and despite being a top 100 guy for us at on three, and you see Baylor, you see Oregon, you see Oklahoma, um, Keenan Hall had been recruiting him uh, for a while before. He left for Baylor, so he's, he is somewhat familiar with SMU and kind of the the pitch in a sense. Um, but Michael Turner is is a quiet prospect who doesn't really talk too much. I've, I've reached out to him a couple times, but um, he 
in front of on three this fall, ran for 309 yards on 45 carries with five total touchdowns. But he mentioned Oklahoma, Oregon, SMU, Texas Tech, Kansas, Baylor. So um, if SMU can get a um, get a visit out of Michael Turner, get a look from him, maybe that turns into being a guy that you almost, at least as far as the rankings go, you end up sitting there saying, okay, that worked out. Now, SMU does need two running backs in this class, which it's a good thing that they are still very much evaluating guys nationally and um, in the state of Texas. Uh, but if if I'm a betting man right now, looking at the offer list that's out there, I would probably say Michael Turner and Tiger Ryden are the two that probably catch my eye the most when it uh, when it comes to um, who SMU is recruiting and if they can get somebody um, from the area, from the um, state of Texas, those are the two that right now stand out. And 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 one more that I guess would would catch my eye, but is kind of an intriguing prospect, and that's Riley Wormley, kind of similar to that Jalen Coleman um, mold there, uh, also from the Dallas area. He's fresh off an Oregon visit. Uh, he is somebody that uh, did win the um, Under Armour Regional MVP. That picture right there, I took it on his profile if you're watching on uh, YouTube. But Texas A&M, Ole Miss are going to get visits from him. The Longhorns, Oklahoma, and Baylor uh, have also offered him. But he is kind of in that Jalen Coleman uh, mold, a little bit of a versatile prospect. He's at South Lake Carroll now after, after transferring in. I think he was ineligible, actually, the first couple of weeks of the season but returned to play for the Dragons and and is a national name. He's been out there for a while, and um, so he is a guy uh, locally to know uh, as well. And then one other name that did pick up an offer this month from uh, Casey Woods, who was down in the Houston area doing some recruiting, is John Kelly, uh, and he's at uh, Cypress Christian. SMU does recruit some of those schools. Um, they sign you know, Speedy Nettles, um, but Cypress Christian – uh, is home to John Kelly, who has picked up some offers lately as well, um, and is a guy that uh, now with his size um, is is starting to pick up more and more recruiting steam. And uh, he's got Power 5 offers under his belt. He transferred into uh, Cypress Christian um, before, or for his junior season. And so you're seeing some schools take a look at him. And he might be a guy that... Um, you know, maybe ends up being a guy that you offer to get into the mix. Um, and then you bring him into camp and you see how that works. But um, now that he is, um, you know, at Cypress Christian and has completed completed his junior season there, uh, he's, he's squarely at one school. He's not transferring. He's going to be back there again. And now SMU uh, went by and evaluated him and liked him enough to offer him. So we'll see kind of how that plays out there but this is the the kind of the hard part about recruiting is when you get early commitments and the, the look things change Keenan Hall moved on uh, Texas offered Ricky Stewart um, Demetrius Brisbane is Ricky's teammate there's certainly buzz around him and other programs as well um, as as he goes through his recruiting process and now that Ricky has backed off his commitment to SMU it doesn't make me feel that good about where things stand. But um, when you get early commitments, this is kind of somewhat of the risk with, with that. It's not really a risk with that. It's more of it's hard to always see that long-time commitment going the distance without a hiccup, without a visit elsewhere, without a decommitment even in some cases, like we saw with Ricky Stewart. That is just the nature of the beast. And when you recruit good players, other programs are going to want them. And so SMU's job now, as it stands, they've got Keelan Russell, who's the centerpiece of this class, the quarterback, who's made maintained that he is locked in with SMU and, and has been active recruiting. JV on holiday, the Duncanville cornerback, locked in, was back on campus just last weekend. He'll probably be back this weekend from uh, what I can tell. And then Dalen Singleton, the, the DeSoto wide receiver. SMU's job is to keep these guys, along with Demetrius Brisbane, on board. And um, if they go elsewhere, they go elsewhere. But they're not going elsewhere at the 11th hour right before early signing period in December. They're 
Ricky Stewart made this decision now. He's probably going to commit to Texas, and it is January. And the nice thing is that SMU always has the portal to lean on as well. But what SMU has to do is bring in at least one, but they like two 2025 running backs. They have Brashard Smith, who should play out his final year of eligibility at SMU. He does have two just in case he wants it, but um, I'd expect him to play out his final year of eligibility in that running back room. Velton Gardner, Jalen Knighton are both in their final years. And then you have LJ Johnson and Kamar Wheaton, who are going to be um, in their last year of eligibility when these 2025 prospects get on campus. You just brought in Derek McFall. And so that is a nice, nice depth piece. What I would expect for SMU at this point is you probably go 2025 running back. You hope you can get two just so you can continue to build through the high school ranks and maybe you don't have to spend some NIL on a transfer running back that can make an immediate impact. But what probably ends up happening is you get one on board and you hope that you can find somebody who can bring in some youth at the running back position and kind of get that room balanced out. Right now, it is top heavy. Four scholarship running backs with one or two years of eligibility left entering the 2024 season. They have Derek McFall on board for the 2024 season. Um, so he'll be there, but he'll probably be a guy that honestly, it wouldn't be a bad thing if you redshirted. So maybe he helps on special teams and ends up playing more than four games, but we'll see. This is kind of the time that you want this to happen if it's going to happen. So now SMU has plenty of time to go through and recruit other running backs and get them in for visits, get them familiar with the staff even more if they haven't already. I mean, guys like Tiger, guys like um, you know, Michael Turner are familiar with the program. Jalen Coleman seemed excited about his offer. And we'll just see how the chips fall. So um, that is kind of the the state of recruiting, uh, at least as of uh, the moment of this podcast. But at the end of the day, SMU has three of their four commitments now sitting as four-star prospects, a good start to this 2025 class. And they have ha hosted a lot of quality prospects um, on campus. We'll talk more about that when it comes to um, some of the guys they've hosted. Um, um, we'll talk about that on the subscriber only podcast uh, when we kind of preview junior day and things like that. Um, but I do uh, want to hit on some of the trends for this class of 2025 for SMU and beyond. And let me tell you guys, I got back from my brother's wedding and I got back to work on, on Monday and it was like, going through and and i'd have to look on our board our message board and and see but i mean there, it's basically an entire page of updating offers and and i believe there's 50 threads on on a page um and and just going back uh to monday they they were already rolling in uh all the offers that went out from this staff over the weekend and and to now um basically um as we continue to update them but but let's hit on a couple here that that caught my eye um and whether it be in-state offers or whether it's um guys who've been on the radar or um just a couple of other trends for you guys to monitor um when it comes to uh this stuff the mustangs have been active in the state of texas offering prospects and and going after it um, with that, uh, in that regard. But one thing they have started to do now is they have gone into the state of Florida and the state of Georgia to ACC states with Georgia Tech um, and, um, and then Florida State and Miami. And they have gone on an offer spree of sorts uh, in this state. In particular, uh, you're looking at the Tampa and Miami areas. You're looking at the Atlanta area for those uh, two states um, uh, in those areas. This is where SMU is saying, hey, we're just about an hour and a half flight, kind of two hours Tampa, a little bit longer Miami, but easy access to the DFW area if you want to get out of the state of Florida, if you want to come to Dallas and play for SMU. Well, SMU's dished out probably 25 plus offers, maybe 30 uh, in those states, uh, two prospects. They've, they've stretched it a little bit, gone to a couple other different areas to offer prospects, saw some in Oklahoma, um, saw some in Louisiana, of course, which we'll touch on here in a moment. But they have gone out and offered 
plenty of prospects uh, in these areas where it is easy to fly to Dallas. And if you've been following this podcast and following me even when I was back at 24-7, I always said this about SMU when it came to once they felt like they had a good base established in the state of Texas. Go out and recruit Atlanta. Go out and recruit Tampa. Go out and recruit Miami. The reasons why, SMU pulls kids from those areas and brings them in as regular students. You have that kind of potential to have notoriety in those areas. You can get kids out of there, and it's so easy to fly into Dallas. Same goes for New Orleans. Hey, pluck a kid like SMU did with Donald Clay back in the day. He was a serviceable player. That type of kind of ability to maybe pluck a player or two from those areas would be nice. That's why they're going after guys like Jalen Coleman. They also offered another prospect from his hometown of Homa, Louisiana, and that is Tyrone Winslow, who is one of the top defensive linemen in the state of Louisiana, a guy who's starting to pick up more and more recruiting buzz around him. He's going to visit SMU in Houston this weekend. Did want to drop that tidbit for you guys. Full story with him coming out. Uh, on the site here by the end of the day if you're listening to this on Wednesday. But he is a big defensive tackle who, at least on paper from what his reported size is, has a size to play ACC football. And he's even gotten it, has gotten an SEC offer from Missouri now. So um, obviously he'll, we'll get him a profile picture at some point. But these are the type of guys that you want to be recruiting. You want to go into states where there's a Georgia, there's a Florida, there's even a Florida State or a Miami, and sometimes you can go in and pick the guys that maybe those big, big, big state schools don't recruit and either overlook or just say, you know what, he's just not tall enough for us in the SEC. Same goes for LSU in Louisiana. That's what SMU should be doing. You look at the priority they put on Trey Fuller, who's out of Shreveport, Louisiana, one of the top defensive backs in the state of Louisiana. Is he going to be thick enough to ultimately ultimately earn an offer from LSU? I don't know. I don't know if that's the case, but he's a good football player. I saw him live. He's got that nasty to his game. He's got that ability to hit people. He's got the frame to run. Those are the type of things that you can work with um, if you're if you're SMU going into the ACC. I look at moments where some really good players have been able to escape big state schools, um, and that's because either they're just not tall enough or they don't, they have something that kind of irks them when it comes to, hey, we, this is an in state guy. We have to be particular about who we offer in the state. What are we going to do about it? Um, we're going to not risk it. We'll go outside the state for a guy that maybe if it doesn't work out and he has to transfer, eh, it's not going to kill us with some of these in state schools. So uh, that is what SMU's game plan looks to be. They've done a really nice job. Uh, of that over the course of the last week, blitzing these areas nationally. And we'll see how it pays off. They could come up completely snake eyes in 2025 in the state of Florida. They could come up 20 uh, snake eyes in the state of Georgia. But you have seen SMU go into the state of Florida and get a quarterback in Tyler Aronson, who's on campus now. You've seen them go coast to coast and bring in California offensive line in the last two cycles. This staff does have the national recruiting chops to do that. Um, We'll just have to see how it goes. But they have gone out and absolutely blitzed uh, really the Southeast and in particular some of these big metros. And I like that plan uh, for SMU. So um, let's hit on a couple others here that that really caught my eye um, and kind of catching you guys up. Uh, one thing, one, one prospect that came on campus uh, this past weekend was Anthony Kennedy. And you'll hear more from him on Thursday. Um, but he's a 2026 defensive lineman. Uh, he's listed as an edge, but he looks like a big boy. Um, and he'll, there's, I mean, just no way he's, uh, you know, as a rising junior in high school, going to end up being an edge prospect. But uh, Calvin Thibodeau had him on campus um, and was able to get him there, offered him, uh, which means he checked the boxes that uh, Coach Tibbs was looking for in terms of his size. Um, and so SMU is going to be one of the programs to watch for him. Long ways out when it comes to his recruitment, but uh, certainly one to track now um, from the uh, state of Arkansas, uh, a state that some of this staff is very familiar with. And then another one that went out um, in the state of Arkansas in 2026 was Kane Archer, uh, who's Greenwood from Greenwood High School in the state of Arkansas. 
2026 quarterback. SMU, obviously, with Keelan Russell committed in the class. Uh, they are going to start working on the 2026 quarterback position and recruiting that spot. Derek King, Rhett Lashley, all those guys will be working on that. And um, uh, Kane Archer is just one of the newest names uh, to know. He's got um, certainly some um, – uh, some some uh, some Dallas area ties from what I understand as well. So he'll probably give them a realistic look. It is tough for me to see the quarterback that Arkansas wants um, getting out of the state of Arkansas, um, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, I believe it was Walker White um, who got out of the state this year and signed with Auburn. Uh, yes, out of Little Rock there. Um, and then Arkansas already has a 2025 quarterback committed in Grayson Wilson. Nice kid. I met him at the U.S. Army game. Um, so SMU did offer um, Kane Archer at quarterback, um, and we'll see how that goes for SMU um, recruiting that uh, state and uh, that position in 2026. Quarterback recruiting starts way early. But let's circle back on uh, the, the Dallas area and SMU going out and offering some big names locally. And uh, the Mustangs have continued to do a nice job prioritizing uh, guys in the Metroplex uh, when it comes to recruiting. And and they dipped into South Dallas a little bit more uh, this week as they extended a trio of offers um, to prospects from the DFW area. One, Emeka, Emeka Ugorji. I might butcher that a little bit, but a big offensive tackle from South Oak Cliff. Picked up an offer from SMU. He's got a bunch of in-state action going on. Um, and so we'll be keeping an eye on him now, uh, now that he's picked up an offer, which, by the way, if you weren't aware, uh, one of the biggest offers for SMU in the class of 2025 and biggest targets is Kamarian Morgan, Morgan, who uh, really impressed at Red Oak this year. Well, he's now at South Oak Cliff. So a big target there for SMU when it comes to recruiting. And they go out and dish out another offer to a sock golden bear um, as uh, they look to retool and get back on the right side of things when it comes to their state championship winning ways. Another prospect that picked up an offer is Gianni Edwards, 2025 defensive back from North Forney. I actually got eyes on him this season and um, I, I'll try to find some pictures of him, but uh, he's a really nice looking prospect when it comes to being a potential cornerback. And I, I think he's just got that frame that if you get him into a weight room and you could put some more weight on him and, and we've seen kind of Ricky Hunley do this where he sees a guy and, and he knows, okay, he needs, he needs time in the weight room. He needs the ability to get the resources that he needs to develop into a player let me make an offer. Let me go after him. We've seen it with AJ Davis uh, um, and and some of the guys like an Alex Rogers in this class that he just signed. They need a weight room. They need a nutrition program. So um, Gianni Edwards, who has Colorado and Maryland also lined up for him, is another offer that went out. And then a big offer, literally, uh, to a tall, tall receiver. He's listed at 6'4", and he's all of it. Emmanuel Choice out of Lancaster, Texas. Um, I saw him as well, and he is kind of that – ball winner receiver can high point things um, and come down with it. Uh, he's got offers from some key in-state programs like Texas. He's also got some bigger offers like Oklahoma and Tennessee and Nebraska coming into the state. And he has been able to uh, stack up a quality list of offers. I kind of felt SMU should have offered him this fall and, and maybe it just kind of slipped through the cracks, but here they are um, offering him now. And uh, the Mustangs are hoping to get him on campus here relatively soon and uh, get him to take a look um, at SMU. He's got double digit offers. He's been to Texas. He's been to Oklahoma for visits from what I understand. Um, but he is uh, very much a, a big target now at wide receiver. And uh, if SMU can pull him off, that would be, that would be solid in the class of 2025. This is a, a guy who can definitely play for SMU. So we'll be tracking him a little bit closer now too. With that guys, I do want to kind of move into a little bit more of the team stuff, but before we do that, I do have to tell you guys that SMU did extend an offer uh, to a transfer prospect. Um, and that is Matthew Hibner uh, from Michigan, um, the program. 
and uh, the national champs, uh, actually, which is weird to kind of say. But uh, he has played in three seasons for the Wolverines, played in eight games in 2021, played in 13 and 22, and then seven in 2023. He did he did not catch pass this season. He's caught two passes for 15 yards. But what he does have is size at 6'5", 254 pounds. He's originally from Virginia. Uh, so uh, SMU could theoretically be playing in his backyard as they travel to UVA this year. Um, but the Mustangs do need a tight end. We've talked about that. Um, and, and he is a really high academic young man who would have one year of eligibility remaining. Um, he played a lot of special teams, uh, but he has played in three years um, and he has uh, two years of eligibility remaining. Uh, so he's got he's or, excuse me, he's got two years of eligibility remaining. He can play one more season because um, he's played in 21, 22, 23. Um, but he was redshirted in 2020 during that covid year. Um, but um, he's got the red shirt available, but. SMU would want him to play one year and be done. We'll be tracking him. Uh, Duke, I believe, did offer him just after SMU. So Johnny Brewer taking a page out of SMU's book um, when it comes to uh, recruiting. I, I know he uh, offered um, Keelan Russell uh, a little bit after he got to Duke, but um, the Mustangs look to be in good shape there. But uh, Duke did offer. SMU's offered. And uh, we'll see kind of what else happens with Matthew Hibner. But he is tweeting out offers. So as of right now, uh, he's got two um, to his name, but we'll we'll be keeping an eye on that and see how things go um, with Matthew Hibner. But I don't have much intel beyond that, uh, but we'll see kind of what happens um, with him. With that, guys, we are going to kind of move into uh, the tail end of the podcast, um, which is going to be um, about some of the offseason goals and things that SMU football has to accomplish. But first, Another reminder about our friends at Status Jet. Again, we talked about the Super Bowl. That's a massive private jet event coming up. But what I can tell you is, is spring break is also coming up. And that is the time where if you can find the right group, go to Colorado, go to Mexico, go to some different places, and maybe a charter jet makes a lot of sense. That's why you need to reach out to our friends at Status Jet. David Henry and his team can go on their website, get a quote, or call them 866-696-7773. Use code PONYUPACC or mention on the Pony Express for a discount. This is that time of year where it's expensive to fly. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, depends depending on your destination, it might make sense to get in and out with a private jet. So that's why you can reach out to Status Jet. It takes no effort on your part, really, to just get a feel for them. Uh, but what I can tell you is, they are going to take care of you at such a high level um, when it comes to getting you to and from your destination. So reach out to Status Jet for more. Head to statusjet.com. Spring football is coming up on us, guys. Um, we are now under a month away. I can tell you that. The official date uh, will come out here um, in the near future. But we're coming up on a National Signing Day. That's next Wednesday. Will then be just weeks away from spring football beginning for Rhett Lashley and the Mustangs. It'll um, be here before we know it. And so, as an overarching kind of topic to just chat about on this podcast, one of the things uh, I wanted to do and hit on is some of the goals that SMU needs to accomplish as a team this off off season. And it's kind of wide ranging here, but there are multiple kind of levels to this and and things that this team needs to accomplish. But one thing I'll note is that Branson Hickman and Kvars Hall are entering the portal as graduate tramp, uh, transfers. Branson Hickman is already officially entered now, uh, so he can get recruited and we'll see where he ends up. <clears throat> but now you have a program that, all right, you you need to add players. You don't need to lose any, any more that wouldn't necessarily be expected. We're not going to talk about those players that maybe – we look up at the end of spring and they have graduated and they do transfer and they enter the portal and they do all that. I'm not going to talk about those guys. I'm not going to opine on that on this podcast. I don't think it's fair to them just yet, but there's always, it seems like attrition, natural attrition. And so we'll be tracking that for you guys at on the pony express.com. But what this team needs to do is they still need to add players. 
at defensive line, probably at corner. Um, they need a tight end, which we talked about with Matthew Hibner. And then we'll kind of go from there and see kind of what else they might need if they do have unexpected departures or if they um, just get out of spring and they say, oh boy, we don't have what we need at exp exposition. Let's go out and get someone. <clears throat> One thing I think as a team they need to continue to improve on is their physicality in the trenches. And this is kind of two different spots here. You have an offensive line that played very well last season. You had an offensive line that had its moments of dominance, not just to where it needs to be for the ACC. I think we'd all agree on that. And I think the coaches would tell you that too. But you have a lot of returning talent. You have Marcus Bryant. You have Justin Osborne. You have Ja'Kai Clark in the middle. You have Ben Sparks, Logan Parr. Um, you add Savion Bird. You bring back P.J. Williams. You've got some young talent coming in. Um, and what you have to develop is a little bit more of an edge. Because with Preston Stone, I think one thing I'd like to see SMU do just a little bit better at, and Rhett Lashley I think would agree because – I think you talked about this season when SMU runs it like 35 times or more. I think that's the sweet spot. Could be, could be wrong. 35 times or more usually means SMU is going to win a football game. And when they don't and they get a little bit more pass happy, that's when things can kind of get a little dicey. And I do think one for Preston Stone's health two to be able to establish yourself as a physical football program in the ACC, I want to see a little bit more of an edge from this offensive line. And and now I, when I say this, it's, it's a tough thing to develop going best on best with your guys. But I do think SMU is one of the better programs on the offensive line of developing his, their guys. Garen justice um, does an, a really nice job with that group developing them. And, and I think that's important. Like look at what Logan Parr did last year. Look at what Ja'Kai Clark did down the stretch. There was a plan in place for those guys, and they chipped away at it, and ultimately they ended up seeing a lot of time in Logan Parr's case and then some time in Ja'Kai Clark's case. Getting a more physical presence, and it's hard to do sometimes with the power spread and sometimes a little bit you know, more finesse um, at moments, and the rotation at running back last year with kind of the guys going in and out and some of the inconsistencies maybe didn't help, but what they need to find is a level of consistency – <clears throat> that a level of consistency in physicality that you can take um, on the road with you in the ACC. You can wear on some opponents in the ACC because if they do, in fact, get another offensive tackle, if they do find another depth piece for the interior, you're going to be okay because you have those guys that are that have the depth that maybe can give those guys a breather and you can keep, for the most part, your offensive line intact. SMU was pretty lucky last year. I mean, Marcus Bryant, um, Justin Osborne, Logan Parr, Branson Hickman, those guys were really able to play just about every game. Then Hyron White, I believe it was the North Texas game, gets hurt kind of on a fluky thing where I think that he just popped his shoulder out and tore something and ended up needing surgery. It might have been a wrist or something. And they had enough depth where it didn't really impact them that much. But at the ACC level, you need that entire group to basically take a big step forward again because week in, week out, it's going to be more physical. It, you're going to hit, get hit harder. The guys are going to be bigger. The backups are going to be bigger. They're going to be faster and stronger. That's the step up in league play that you're taking. So finding a consistency and physicality on the offensive line is going to be very important. I like what SMU has at tight end. I, I think solving the any – Issues there would be in bringing in a transfer uh, to be to bring an edge in blocking. Um, but if you look at the pass catching, I mean, RJ Maryland is very good, needs to just be a touch more consistent, still young. Adam Moore is 20, probably 21 years old here pretty soon. Year old sophomore who's going to be a really impressive pass catcher, um, you know, next year in a bigger role, I would think. But at receiver, a goal of this offseason is to find a guy that emerges. And last year, I mean, I talked about how I thought Jordan Curley was going to be that guy. I, I thought the opportunity was there with Rasheed Rice leaving. 
his work ethic, which is still incredible, but it just didn't happen. And he was, and he ended up getting injured again. And I feel for him. I mean, last year was supposed to be kind of his year. And um, for SMU, I think they need a guy who can go and get it. And I think it's got to be Jordan Hudson. You're going into year two, caught seven touchdowns in 2023, um, has played a lot of football now. And now is it settled into SMU. Jordan Hudson has to be that guy that we go out there and we say, wow, he is going at it with Deuce Harmon in practice. He's going at it with Jalen Davis Robinson in practice, Jahari Rogers, A.J. Davis, all those guys. He's a problem. And I, I just don't think, kind of looking back on fall camp, we knew that there was a much better defensive effort and much better defensive personnel group on the other side. So it was hard for the first time in a long time at SMU. We sat there and said, all right, well, this is just a really good secondary. This is a really good front line that's getting after the quarterback. And it kind of was the reason why, okay, we just think everything's going to be okay because that's how everything has been on offense for SMU. This year, now we can say, okay, this defense, at least for the most part, is having some guys back. They've added some talent. They have talent to match up with these receivers, so it should be expected that there's battles. But what we need to see is we need to see one of these receivers be the guy, be the guy that absolutely wins the reps, that is that number one. That was Rasheed Rice going into, in particular, fall camp. Fall camp, he was absolutely dominant before Rasheed Rice's monster final season at SMU. Jordan Hudson has to be that guy. Has to be that guy on the outside. Because, yes, SMU can have slot guys like Jake Bailey and Roger Daniels. And Burchard Smith is going to be at running back and could be a gadget player. And they could be problems to defend. But going best on best, even as teammates, those moments of, okay, well, they tried to scheme up like this little jet sweep for any of those guys. Or they're trying to set up something that a defense has seen over and over again. It just doesn't happen like that for the slots usually in practice. You see those slots become guys on the field in 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 games. Jordan Hudson has to be the guy, I think. And that doesn't mean Moochie Dixon being healthy can't help himself because he was playing with broken finger uh, for about the first half of the year. Romello Brinson could take another step being in the system again. Um You have Keyshawn Smith, who, if he can be more consistent, can take a step. But it's Jordan Hudson who has the true star power in that group. And he's got to show it. And developing that is a major goal of the offseason. These are just some of them. I'll flip to the defensive side right now. But for SMU, we'll kind of break it more down on the side as spring ball gets closer. I am not worried about the defensive line. I'm not worried about it. I mean, I I think on paper and in practice, it should be as tough to play against as we saw in fall camp last year. And that was kind of the reason why there was such optimism around this football team. SMU couldn't really run the ball against this defensive front. It's a it's going to look very different, potentially. You have Tank Booker, who's this massive dude, but he's not really viewed as a guy who's expected to come in and start. You have Mike Lockhart for that. Corey Roberson is going to be another key piece. But Jonathan Jefferson has played at Georgia and been in a rotation playing behind first-round type pick, picks and five-star talent. Jonathan Jefferson, and sorry if I said Jordan, but Jonathan Jefferson is the guy who could be the Elijah Roberts of this year. I do believe that. And if he's that guy, then this defensive line is going to be scary. We know that SMU would love to add one more defensive tackle. That's from a talent and a depth perspective. They saw what it meant to have that talented of a group this year and what it meant for their football team. So, But I'm not worried about the defensive line in this offseason. I'm really not. They've got to stay healthy. Every position does. But it's it's got a chance to be a really good group. The goal would be to get something out of Kevin Allen, Braden Flowers. Omari Abor is a new guy, but hasn't played much. David Abiara. If you can bring that out of those guys, then you're looking at a group that you feel even better about. 
And maybe you can just add a depth piece then and then go out and find a top flight corner because it's all a balancing act with NIL and transfer portal priorities. Maybe those things, if you get these younger guys to truly be either fringe too deep guys or a true 10 snap a game, you're not worried about them guy like a Kevin Allen or a Braden Flowers or a David Abiara, then you're looking at, okay, we can go out and find somebody or maybe we find a guy who's redshirted, has new coaches, doesn't like his situation anymore, but he's got years. And then all of a sudden, SMU finds a way to address the defensive tackle position for the next three years versus having to think about it and say, all right, here we go again. Next offseason, Elijah Roberts, Jafar I. Harvey, Corey Roberson, Mike Lockhart, Tank Booker, all leave. That's five. That's going to be tough. But you will have guys that can come up and maybe next year you don't have to do as much with the older guys. Maybe they can prioritize a younger guy for the spring. Linebackers, not worried about. Uh, the, just the goal would be to take the next step. All of those guys, minus Jaquandis Burns, will be in year two of the system. And Zach Smith, the early enrollee at linebacker, will be on campus. Brandon Booker gets here this summer. It's just kind of that next step. Alex Kilgore, can you be – can can you go from having started game one to being just a solid rotational player at linebacker to taking the next step so that – wow, you're fighting tooth and nail with Kobe Wilson and Ahmad Walker for reasons to take either one of you three off the field in terms of the, the main rotation guys. And safety, they have everybody back. It's not really a, a position that you worry about. Cornerback, the development of Jalen Davis Robinson and A.J. Davis is so important. But also they have a wild card now in Teddy Knox, who's been a heck of a gunner for them on special teams. Can you develop any one of those three, along with Keyshawn Mills, into something that you can say, wow, okay, now we feel better about it. Still got to go out and get one more contributor at the cornerback spot, but maybe it is in a, situ in a good enough spot where they should be in good shape for the ACC, even if they didn't. So those are some of the goals. Um, uh, and and I think just continuing to get better at tackling. There were moments last year against the Rice game against Rice, um, Boston College. I mean, I just don't. The, the field was crap, and it, it was just a train wreck um, situation with the the weather and the field. I'm not. There were moments where it was bad and egregious, but it was just a bad situation. Um, but the Rice game. Um, Memphis at times, um, there wasn't, wasn't many when this defense was truly poor at tackling. I felt like they wore down against Oklahoma and TCU at times, and, and it kind of fell apart. They were trying to press, too. They were playing from behind. Um, but for the most part, this defense is, is much improved, obviously, after last year. But what they can do is continue to get better at tackling. And you have some new faces here and there that you can develop on that front. So, um, Colin Rogers, I think this is an underrated piece. He is healthy from what I understand. Last year in spring, he was hurt. I mean, he maybe kicked one field goal, and he went back to Alabama in the summer and worked with his trainer to kind of get back. I think a full off season gives him the chance going into his junior year to maybe stake his claim to being a, a, a guy, you know, that can really be relied upon. And there were moments where he was clutch and incredible, and then moments when he, you know, wasn't. Um, and then they have to just continue to get much more on the same page when it comes to protection on special teams. They had a, a few miscues that really cost them. And most of them were, you know, coming down to protection on either punt or kickoff or um, field goal. Other than that, I there are moments where they gave up a return here and there, but um, they'll have a new punter in Isaac Pearson. But this is a, a team that is in decent shape when it comes to special teams. They've got to find a way to protect better on punt and, and field goal. That is a major goal. And if they do that, then they have a chance to be pretty good on special teams. Bob Richard Smith in the, in the return game, Roderick Daniels in the return game. Those are two monster weapons. Um, again, Richard Smith was fourth nationally in kickoff return average last year in the ACC. So, with that, guys, uh, that about wraps it up. We went a little long on this podcast, but hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, this is going to be a lot of fun the, the next few weeks, kind of getting back into 
uh, you know, spring ball talk and, and seeing where the recruiting class stands and things like that. Um, we'll talk a little bit more basketball later this week. I want to see how they uh, play against Tulane on Thursday night. But obviously the past week was atrocious for them and they are no longer in the NCAA tournament picture, barring a win uh, in the AAC tournament um, to, to, you know, earn their championship that way. So with that, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. We will catch you guys um, later this week with another edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. Thanks for listening to the On the Pony Express podcast with Billy Embody. Follow us on your socials on X at SMU on three and on Instagram at on three SMU. And keep it locked to onthepony dot com for more coverage.